Many of the things we buy and use every day come to us through long, complex international supply chains. From the places they were grown or made, they are carried to us by systems of trucks and ships and ports and trains and distribution hubs and delivery vehicles. This involves burning fossil fuels, which have well-known environmental and health impacts. Carbon emissions cause climate change, and freight puts about 30% of all transport-related CO2 emissions into the atmosphere every year. Air pollution causes respiratory disease and other health problems. Increased air pollution in port cities accounts for tens of thousands of premature deaths every year. One way to reduce those environmental impacts would be to have shorter, simpler supply chains, to buy things made or grown nearer to us. But there are ways to reduce pollution from even long and complex supply chains, and they aren't theoretical. The Home Depot adopted strategies that improved efficiency and reduced costs in a supply chain between China and the United States. This chain has six transportation links drayage or short-haul trucking from factories to port terminals in Shenzhen, ocean shipping, drayage from U.S. ports, inland shipping via rail and truck to distribution centers, and finally, delivery of products to stores. The changes were straightforward, consolidating cargo to take up all the space in the containers, optimized scheduling, using shore power in port, more fuel-efficient trucks, slow steaming on the ocean leg, and eco-driving on land. Home Depot shared the data with us, and we calculated the reduction in energy consumption and emissions. Then we estimated a business-as-usual baseline without these improvements for the same segments. Though the changes were nothing exotic or futuristic, the effects were significant. Compared to business-as-usual, Home Depot's China-U.S. supply chain used nearly 30% less energy, meaning it produced nearly 30% less CO2 and also reduced local air pollutant emissions by more than 20%. Greening supply chains in this way doesn't depend on altruism. Improving efficiency cuts costs as well as emissions. So that's what's possible now. In the years ahead, ambitious strategies could yield nearly 70% reductions in energy consumption and 70 to 80% reductions in air pollution. Think of zero emission trucks, electric locomotives, and pollution control policies for ships. Business can make this happen by learning about and sharing best practices. But that won't happen by itself. It needs public policies that push all players to improve in many ways. Policies like fuel efficiency and pollutant emission standards for the trucks that haul goods from factories to ports and depots, and the ships that carry them between continents. Incentives to encourage electrification. Tax policies and congestion pricing to promote efficient logistics and reduce trips. And more. The benefits of global trade come with environmental costs but they are not fixed. We have good, tested ways to bring these costs down. We just need to make it happen.